Welcome back to the Vet SOS Podcast brought to you by the Who You Know Network. Remember, don't drown to see a transition. Grab the Vet SOS Lifeline. As always, I'm here with my partner, Mark. Mark, we got another great guest today, Jeff Weber. Uh, can't wait to hear what he's got going on. How are you doing today, Mark? Hey, I'm doing good. Good morning, everyone. I'm here in the tunnel uh, next to the Brooklyn Bridge, so <laughs> doing a little bit of improvising and trying a new space, so apologies for the, I think it's a little echoey in here, but uh, welcome to the show, and uh, strap in because we got a lot of great information today, and can't wait to hear from everyone, so uh, appreciate you being here. Absolutely, absolutely. We want to thank everybody for tuning in, as always, and want to remind you that we put this out over the Restream platform, so if you have social media networks and you want to put this out as uh, original content live over your social media channels hit us up with hashtag pairing we'll tell you how to pair your channels with restream it's super simple and it comes out beautifully out on your platforms so we'll get right into it here we have uh jeff uh who is an entrepreneur for the for 11 years and he decided he needs something more adventurous at 20 years as intelligence officer in the u.s navy now retired uh, from the Navy, Jeff is the founder of a new technology startup called Heirloom. Heirloom turns your old media into cloud-based digital media, so you have memories forever. They don't just serve their customers, and they currently have eight DoD SkillBridge interns learning about cloud technology, from fulfillment operations, and marketing. Sounds like a great organization, a great project. Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Sean. Thanks for having me here. Uh, Mark as well. I really appreciate it. And um, I was thinking like, what is what is the one thing that Sean's podcast listeners really want to know? Because they don't want to talk to just another guy. We you know, like some some other veteran. Um, and and so as I focus on like that transition, and and I went through that not long ago myself, it it can be arduous. You got to have these connections, you got to meet a lot of people. And my one word, my my word of the day is skill bridge. And so, you know, ask me anything about that program. It's it's I, I think a phenomenal program. Not only does our company, we're, we're an accredited skill bridge member, and we've had actually oh, we've had dozens of of people run through our skill bridge program. We have eight interns right now. Great program. I also skill bridged myself to my company off of active duty and you can imagine how things go in the navy where they're like wait a second you can't do that and i'm like well i'm not supervising myself my co-founder will be my supervisor and it cleared through osd and i i got to do it as well so i i understand skillbridge from from both sides both as uh that 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 intern and then working with these exciting interns and would love to talk to your your listeners um about that and answer any questions that they may have. Yeah, uh, that's so, fantastic. And I love I love that story. The first time you told me it about how you skill bridge yourself is just amazing. Mark, you got a, a question? Yeah. So Jeff, and I think that's great. Skill bridge is a great tool, but why skill bridge? I know there's you know other assessments out there, but can you tell the, the viewers like what the the draw to skill bridge is? I think I know, but I'd like to hear from you. Yeah, let me Mark, let me compare and contrast. We we have another internship program here where I'm located in Charleston, South Carolina. We have a facility, young people putting hands on media, flipping tapes and all that kind of stuff. And we have a, a, what they call a work-based training program with the high school. And so we have high school interns come in. They learn how to do digital media. Um, you know, there are quite a few are like, nah, not really interested in this. And they go elsewhere. Obviously, they're they're not a, a hiring opportunity for us. And there are others who really like that. And so it's a great way to identify good workers. We both get to kind of test each other out. I, you know, they, they don't have to make a, a, a commitment to us or or vice versa until we know that it's a, it's a good and symbiotic relationship. Magnify that 100x with the skill bridge internship program, because now we're talking, we're not just talking a 18 year old man or woman coming out of high school. We're talking about someone who for a period of years had signed a blank check to the nation um, payable with their very life if required. And so that means a lot. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to my co-founder and and the partners at Heirloom, but it should mean a lot to every employer. And so we love the program. We understand, you know, we're brothers and sisters. 
Um, most of us at Heirloom are vets, not all of us, but many of us are. And so we understand what the service member brings to our organization. Um, I'll tell you, they show up on time. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, 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 the big takeaway show up on time, be in the right uniform, follow, or, like we all do that. And it's, it's indoctrinated in us as service members, whether you were four years or 40, um, there's, there's something we can, we can count on, um, uh, service transitioning service members to just be some, some rock stars in, in the skill bridge program. Yeah, I think, you, yeah, thank you. You, you, you hit a lot of great points in that, that piece right there that, one that jumps out is is you hit on probably the second benefit of the skill bridge, in my opinion. One, you're hoping you land a job. You know, you're doing the skill bridge to sort of work yourself into a, into a job. But the other piece is you you find out maybe what you don't want to do. Maybe you thought you were going to do this. This is what you, where your career path was. This is where you're going to go. But the skill bridge ultimately could show you, hey, maybe you don't want to do that, and you know. I would I would argue that you know people need to do a lot of informational interviews and and talk to a lot of people to learn about these fields and and hopefully narrow some things down that way. But um, and I love that point that you made there uh, with the skill bridge because that, that's a big factor and you know it also helps the company because maybe you're just not the right fit for them. That, that that's right, Sean. Uh, you, I think what you said and it, it's a great time for us as transitioning service members allows us the opportunity to reinvent ourselves. And so, you know, if you're driving tanks or dropping bombs um, in, in your military career, it's really hard to segue into something into the private sector doing that. And that's why this skill bridge program was created years ago. Like you, you need that transition. What, what I'm really humbled by is the, some of the interns who've been preparing for their transition or retirement for, for quite a while. And so they've taken it upon themselves, whether it's tuition assistance or some other program to say, I'm going to get trained up in this. I'm going to get my project management certification, or I'm going to get my cloud computing cert from AWS. And they, they're already bringing that to the table. And to us, that's like, wow, you did that on your own. Great. We're going to give you the opportunity to learn even more <clears throat> and not just death by PowerPoint, click through some educational training that someone can do from anywhere, um, but then actually put hands on and apply that training within our technology startup. And I think the feedback that I get from interns who, those which who stay with us and those who go on to other places was, it was an incredible opportunity. I never would have been able to do this before. I was actually putting out posts on social media through multiple platforms. And it was exciting to do this and see how it worked um, behind the scenes. So we love it. It To us, the Skill Bridge program is, is indeed a symbiotic relationship with the transitioning service members. Uh, that's awesome. That really, really cool. So let's, let's talk about heirloom a little bit. What you did, you were an entrepreneur. Then you did your, your, your military career intelligence officer. I've been intelligence my, my entire career you know, just tells me you're an upstanding citizen right off the bat because, you know, us intelligence people have to stick together. But, you know, what made you decide that you wanted to start the, this company heirloom? Tell us a little bit about it and what, why you went that way. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I, I'm in the, the marrying and burying stage of life. I'm, I'm in my early fifties and, you know, elderly parents, kids who are now launched outside of the home. And, and I think we tend to feel like, and, and maybe, you know, retired military members it's just in our culture to be like the defenders of our families and and the historians if you will and so i just took taken upon some projects for over many years and i think it was a time where i'm like telling my wife hey for the next couple of years we're just gonna be living out of suitcases we're going overseas this is going to be like, like all this stuff's going to go into storage. And she grabs this VHS tape and she says this was our wedding video and i told you to make copies of this and i'm like what multiple vhs cassettes you create no no dvds and i'm like no i ain't making dvds what i'm gonna make one for your mom one for my dad and like that that's that's dumb they can still crack and break and so i decided i'm gonna digitize everything we had rather than throw it in the storage and put it on a cloud server and i just thought okay doesn't everyone do that and no they don't it's super arduous to do and that was one of the epiphanies that this is a great need that people have to 
preserve the memories on that old, outdated, and decaying media that's susceptible to complete loss from a, a fire in your home or flooding or hurricanes or hard drive failures. I mean, 25% of hard drives will crash within five years. And you're like, oh, no, that had all my cool pictures on it. Um, from all the places we as service members have gotten to live around the world and and the you know whether we're, we're on leave and taking some great pictures in and around germany or you know you name the 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 cool places that we that we get to to see and experience and so that was that was a, a major catalyst this was happening to me in my, my last several years of active duty and i i became an active duty entrepreneur essentially um spending a couple of years doing what we would call rdt and &E, research development test and evaluation and it was only just last year that we officially launched heirloom and it, it's exciting we love it that's fantastic and you're absolutely right i mean not, not only do do hard drives crash and technology crash and one lightning strike could you know take out everything very easily um so that that, that cloud-based thing you know and i applaud you for being you know being up and current and everything, I'm still considering myself a bit of a dinosaur. You know the whole the whole cloud thing. I haven't bought a hundred percent into, but but I'm getting there slowly. Um, it, it's just amazing the technology that we have today. It is, and you know we've been looking at the statistics for the last several years about cloud adoption. Um, I speak with customers on the phone, and uh, many of which, let's say, are uh, an older generation than I am, maybe in their 60s or 70s. And they're like, oh, I don't know about this thing called cloud. Can't you just give me my digitized memories on a DVD? And like, no, we do not contribute to making more plastic that's going to go into <laughs> landfills. And then, you know, it, it, it's ultimately going to fail. They're going to get scratched and you're going to lose your memories. And we don't think that that's responsible. And so we, we don't make DVDs. And what we've had to do is we've had to train many of maybe let's say the the older generation on what is the cloud and why is it safe and secure um and uh one thing we're like do you use facebook well yeah okay well that's the cloud do you use instagram that's the cloud i mean it, all of these services are on what we call the commercial cloud we as a company are riding like many like the nfl like netflix like airbnb Heirloom is riding on Amazon Web Services. Um, and so the capability that AWS brings to Heirloom is phenomenal. And their durability, and this this is this is the, the the big takeaway here, Sean. The durability of the Amazon cloud is what they call 11 nines. So 99.9999% durable. What that means is you are 411 times more likely to get hit by a meteor than lose a single file on the heirloom cloud. And, and we, we thank our partners at AWS for, <laughs> for allowing us, allowing us to give that level of assuredness to our customers. Jeff, you don't understand. Murphy's messed with us every time we've done recordings and you're going to bring up meteors. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, here it comes. <laughs> It, it's not perfect. Nothing ever is. You know, hey, guys, we've all worked as security professionals one way or another, and we understand there is no such thing as 100% security. And, and that's why we're like, it's 11 nines. You know, could we get to 13 nines, 14 nines? Possibly, but it's never going to be 100%. Absolutely. I was I was wondering about that. Um, I had an old phone with a bunch of pictures on it. My first child's, some of his baby pictures. And it's encrypted because my company's security policy with their exchange server, they control your phone, basically. And I forgot the main password to log into the phone because I'd always just use like fingerprint or whatnot. And I locked it up and the policy is that, that it resets. So I lost all of those pictures. Um, they were on the SIM card, the 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 USB card, right? The micro, um, but they were encrypted and the key was on the phone. So gone. So something like that, like, oh, that would be, that would have been huge for me. <laughs> yeah. So we're, 
we're we're not there yet. We haven't solved. We we've been recording all these problems that that our customers have. Hey, can you do this? How about that? Um, one that we get from our customers is, I love having all my old stuff sitting on heirloom, and I'm just going through looking at this stuff from like, I don't know, videos from 40 years ago. It's so cool. Can you make it really easy so I can import everything like my new stuff off of Google Photos into Heirloom? And so that's one thing we're working on to make it very simple. Instead of having to go to Google Photos, download into multiple zip files, and then you're doing the, you know, you're a data monkey and you're moving the folders around and then you got to re-upload it to Heirloom. We're making it one click. Um, to bring all of your media into one safe place. Um, but I, I hear you, Mark. Um, I, and I've lost, I've lost precious memories myself. Um, my, I, I, my dad, an uncle, um, one was a flood, one was a fire and, and it's, it's heartbreaking. And so that's um, one of our, our, actually the heirloom vision is what we say, no memory left behind. And so we don't want these cool photos left on a, an encrypted SIM card or a DVD, which cracked or a hard drive, which crashed or a VHS tape where the Mylar film decayed. Um, we, we don't want to leave those memories behind. Now, some of them might not be meant for sharing and we understand that. And so our private social network called heirloom, you could be like, okay, I'm watching that, but I'm not going to share it with anyone else. And so you keep it private. It's encrypted. Um, no one else will be able to see it, but we do make it very simple with one click. You can say, wow, what used to be a VHS cassette, I'm now clicking, sending it to my mom, sending it to my dad, sending it to my brother, sister, everyone who appeared in it. And you don't have to make those multiple copies, but getting back to, we're not there yet. Um, everything on heirloom renders in a browser. And so you pull it up in a laptop or a desktop environment. Um, we're currently coding iOS and Android applications because we do not yet have the camera um, to cloud capability that will be coming out in the second quarter this year. I'm nice. really wow. excited. So you can go directly from your phone and say, just send it all to Heirloom. Keep it safe in one place. That Yeah, that's awesome. That, that's what I would have needed. Yeah. Yep. Now, what about um, some of the, you know, like the brain injury, um, patients and, you know, people that have suffered from that PTSD, what, what's some of the work that you're doing there? Well, it's self-care. Um, so I, um, I mean, it, it's hard to be out in the battle space and not have encountered, uh, uh, events or, or injuries that, um, w to, w to which we all struggle. And um, I'll admit my my last, it, it was only my last couple of years on active duty where I had the time on shore duty, like, hey, what, what what's going on here? Why, why, am, why am I so angry? Why, why am I having such difficulty, um, I don't know, with civilians and, and understanding them? And um, don't they know how good they have it here in America? Like this is, this is, this is incredible. Um, even my relationship with my wife and my kids, it was like, yeah, dad's kind of, yeah, he, he's kind of off. And, um, and I just thought, no, I'm, I'm doing the right thing. What, what's, what's wrong with the rest of you? Uh, the military trains us, our experiences, um, they, they really shape us. And, um, I didn't realize just exactly what my problem was. Um, I will say, fortunately, I, checked myself into Walter Reed several years ago and they were like, dude, you got severe PTSD. And I'm like, well, Oh no, I, I thought that was everyone else. Okay. And like, no, no. And um, they eventually took me to um, NICO national intrepid center for excellence uh, for TBI. And I don't know if any of you or listeners have ever walked in there. I, I just felt like this, this is wonderful. Um, I, I, I I regretted that it wasn't um, in existence 15, 20 years ago when I had some other buddies that really could have used it and how they're dealing with their TBIs or, or struggling. Um, and uh, the, it, it, it came up. Yeah. You, you, you also have a, a, a TBI that's, that's affecting, affecting your, you know, constant headaches, um, confusion, um, 
a, a vestibular dysfunction. Like apparently I'm no longer allowed to hang picture frames on the wall for my wife because I can't tell which is what, what's level. Um, we we don't know these things until we actually get checked out. And so I would say to every transitioning service member, get yourself checked out. Um, I thought I was fine. I got it all bottled up. I'm good to go. I'm not bothering everyone, anyone else. Everyone else has an issue. What's yeah. wrong with them? No, it might, it might be us. We may need some, some support. And so I'm, I'm thankful to, uh, to some doctors and some therapists that have uh, that that continue to help me, and through the VA system, which I'm now a part of, um, to continue to help me um, as I work through some, you know, some injuries and and some some traumatic situations that I think many of us have experienced. I completely agree, and I think we still have that stigma. Uh, in, in the service, you know, and, and I know when, when I did my first certain time and anytime I had soldiers, I openly talked about going to anger management, going to talk to somebody um, because one, I, I wasn't ashamed and had I not done it, I wouldn't still be married. Uh, you know, I probably wouldn't see my kids, things like that, because I had a lot of anger. Um, and so it, it, we need to, and definitely you can get to the point where there's some self-care too. And, uh, but sometimes it, we have to start right with that with that that conversation i applaud you for taking those steps um are there any specific resources in in that realm that uh you think people should be checking out well i think your podcast is one yeah. um and uh i i say that you know start with the professionals um and they should um get you into some groups and I, I think that was really helpful for me uh, to be a part of a PTSD support group. Um, I can talk to my doctor one v one, and and she can recommend um, great things and, and and a way of of kind of changing my thinking um, and and bringing it back to kind of normal normal thinking. Uh, um, maybe not so intense and so angry. Um, but uh, her having me join a, a support group and we had a Vietnam veteran in our support group. Um, there are, there were quite a few with um, I, I've, I've since moved. So I'm no longer part of this group. So I've referred to them in the past, but um, in, in that particular group um, quite a few with very obvious um, uh, wounds, um, uh, physical wounds, um, not just the 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 unseen wounds of 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 trauma or um or, or brain injuries and I, I think it was to me you know realizing that we're we're kind of all in this together and we're, we're we've got very similar struggles and so when when Johnny says something you're like yeah actually I I feel that same way too I I thought it was just me and and we can lean on each other we can provide resources to each other. Um, I think what I really needed was I also needed to be there for them. And I think as I was helping to help each of the others in my group, it was, I mean, you, you know, this Sean, it's see one, do one, teach one. And so, um, you know, now that I'm maybe a little further along in that process and some younger guy or gal comes through, who's really struggling with it, um, I can help guide them as well, at least be that, that, um, empathetic listener, um, which we all need, you know, I, I, I just need to talk to someone about this. Um, you know, what is this, is this, have you had similar experiences? And I think that is, um, I think that's a most powerful thing. If you can get into a support group, um, it'll be good for, it's good for everybody. Um, Navy, uh, analogy, rising tide, lifting all boats. And so um, when we're in these groups, it, it, it's not just like me selfishly benefiting. We're all, we're all experiencing that, that growth and together and that, that healing together. And it's, it's really, it's, it's encouraging. It's a great analogy for this. <laughs> Absolutely great analogy. Um, yeah. I mean, we can re rejoice in, in, someone else someone else in the group and and how they how they i don't know mended a relationship with their their spouse and you're like yeah this is great so good to hear 
um, and and you get to be a part of that. Um, and then they're there for you as as well. So, I yeah, a- absolutely. And, and our story is powerful, especially if it's your personal story. The the lives you can touch and change just by sharing it uh, can be amazing. And like you said, you, you hit the nail on the head. You know, am I the only one going through this? And then you find out, no. And, and if you want honesty, have a veteran group. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna have some real conversations, um, and, and that, that's the beauty of it. <laughs> we, we we do have some strong opinions, do we not, Sean? <laughs> One or two, and I know Mark does too. Mark Mark is a uh, Air Force veteran. So I, we won't hold that against him. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, we somebody's got to clean the toilets, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, love the joint force. We've become so purple over the years, and yes, uh, just yes. I mean, we 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 are we are better together. Oh, and yeah. uh, you know, I'm I'm getting a ride from the Air Force, and I'm 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 so thankful that Army's holding security over here. And it's just it it's an amazing joint force. In, in some ways, I kind of miss it. But going back to Skillbridge, I get to work with a lot of veterans. And so we're still, we share that same esprit de corps at, at heirloom where um, we've had uh, skill bridge interns from, from every service and, uh, and and they all bring some, a a slightly different perspective to the table. We joke with the air force folks as well, but I I gotta say air force has a phenomenal program, a, a phenomenal way of getting their transitioning service members into skill bridge because majority of ours have all been through air force. Well, that that's, you know, maybe a good point that you bring up and for the benefit of the viewer audience and listener audience is, can you kind of maybe just one oh one like, what does it take to get into the program? Cause it's pretty extensive. Right. And I think you even need to get some kind of clearance, don't you? Um, well, I'm thinking of a slightly different clearance before okay. I can tell us. You, you, know, get approval. You, you need to get approval. approval. You need to get approval from your command. Um, it is a benefit up to 180 days by DOD instruction. Um, of, of course, you know, there are some people that are in a position and maybe they didn't plan it out with an amount of time to notify their command. Um, maybe they're in a a, a position where their relief is not yet on board. And so the command's not going to let them go as soon as they might like to. Um, but it is a benefit up to six months. We've had interns for as short as like six weeks. We've had them for as long as six months um, at heirloom. They're all rolling internships. We'll make a training plan specific to your start date and your end date and where your interests are. And we'll put you into a, a an internship that, that's good for us and the service member. But getting back to what's required is you need to have a participant. One, uh, you need to have a authorized skill bridge organization, like let's say heirloom, say, yep. We would love to have you on internship. Here is a participation agreement. Some people call them a memorandum of understanding saying service member Schmuckatelli, um, starting on this date, ending on this date, this is what their training plan looks like. We will muster them. We'll, we'll take care of all their training. This is what's going to be good about our particular skill bridge program. This is what they're going to learn. Um, and so it's just a very a real boilerplate memorandum that's signed by the skill bridge organization the, the service member just takes that to their command and said hey you said i could skill bridge for four months and i've got a company that said they will skill bridge they give me this skill bridge starting on this day ending on this date exactly four months and then it's just really simple the command just authorizes it signs it they send it to us and we're like giddy up day one you you are now spending your time with heirloom most of our internships are remote um, we've had uh, interns around the country dialing in, kind of like what we're doing right now through Zoom, um, Slack, and and other great capabilities where we can coordinate um, across the time zones. And we do have some uh, internships in person here in Charleston, South Carolina as well, and looking for more, many, many more. So uh, that's big fantastic. plug for Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah, well, that that was... Well, one, we're, we're coming down to the end, so we're going to close it out here. But I did want to ask you that is how many 
interns, Skillbridge interns can you support? How, how many are you looking for? Does, does it matter? Are you infinite? Um, and then in closing, is there anything you want to leave our audience with? Yeah, thanks, Sean. Um, there will come a time where it's just we, we have too many. But as an early stage company, we know that eventually we're going to be up to the 200 or 300 employees. And we're, we're talking within the next several years. And so um, that could be two or 300 interns that transition into full-time employment at, at Heirloom. So I, th I think we're looking at some very bullish numbers. Um, if you have an, inter in an interest, go to our website, um, www heirloom with a silent h h e i r l o o m dot cloud um click on a skill bridge tab um see what our, our internships are see what we do see if it's something you'd like to learn about um but it's it's nearly unlimited um what we can do if if you're interested um we we could get you further trained on what you're interested in and then um talk about what that might look like at the end of an internship. And then, yeah, last thing I would offer to your, your listeners, Sean and, and Mark is um, if you're like, Oh, wow, I really want to get my media digitized or, or I want my dad or my mom or my in-laws to do this. Um, we would love to help you. We have this thing called an heirloom connect kit. Um, it's essentially a media mailer with a prepaid label on it from UPS ships to you with all the secondary containment, industrial plastic bags and zip ties to make sure that everything is sealed um, and, and nice and secure, secondary labeling inside. Sean, might be the way that by instruction, we sometimes send very sensitive documents through FedEx, UPS. We employ the same um, procedures in mm -hmm. handling people's media. That kit, we usually charge $29.99. It includes three-way shipping, shipping to you, shipping of your full contents to us, and then we return your media after it's been digitized. We do all that for $29.99, and then you pay a per-item fee to get that tape digitized or these 100 loose photos. Um, if any of your listeners go to um, heirloom.cloud forward slash vet SOS, um, they can just click and get 50% off one of these connect kits. And awesome. uh, yeah, we'd, we'd love you to, to uh, experience that. So just remember heirloom.cloud forward slash vet, vet SOS. Love it. And thank you so awesome. much for that, Jeff. Our, our customers can definitely take advantage of that. And I know I have a few that I got to ship over to you. Uh, definitely have some old things I need to catch up on. Uh, we want to thank you, Jeff, for coming on. Great organization, great things going on. Love the fact you're supporting SkillBridge and uh, just a great opportunity. I hope our, our listeners uh, see this episode and you just get swamped with interns and really, you know, take care of them to the next level. We want to thank everybody for tuning in to the Vet SOS podcast. Remember, don't drown the sea of transition. Grab the Vet SOS lifeline. 